In today's video, we have some tantalizing tales of outstanding archaeology taken from all over the world. You're going to see archaeologists in modern-day countries finding the relics of their original occupants, and members of the public stumbling across long-lost wonders. We'd want to show you these amazing archaeological finds as well as tell you about them, though. So we're going to jump straight into it. Excavations at the Brazilian archaeological site of Vale de Pedra Ferrada have been ongoing since 2011 and turned up some wonderful things during that time. In May 2021, though, the researchers there came across something unlike anything they'd ever seen before. The artifact in question is this single stone tool, which might raise questions about the true history of the arrival of the first humans in South America. This tool was unquestionably shaped by human hands and is approximately 24,000 years old. Prior to its discovery, it was thought that the first human settlers arrived on the South American continent roughly 15,000 years ago. The flat, disc-shaped tool has serrated edges and was most likely used to cut animal hides and plant fibers. Since its discovery, a further 2,000 stone objects have been found in the same location some of which may also be tools. We have no idea who the people who made these tools were. Until May 2021, we didn't even know they existed. A few archaeologists and historians are still clinging on to the idea that the tool might not be what it appears to be, or that it could have natural origins after all. But it's looking increasingly likely that the history of South America will have to be rewritten. We've known what the famous pharaoh Tutankhamun of Egypt looked like ever since Howard Carter broke into his tomb in 1922. As of 2017, we also have an idea of what his grandmother looked like. Earlier that year, a large alabaster statue was discovered by a cooperative team of European and Egyptian archaeologists at the site of the funerary temple of Amenhotep III in Qam el Hatan. The experts were actually in the process of trying to move an even larger statue of Amenhotep when the second statue was found hidden behind it. Because of where the statue was placed, the team is convinced that it represents Queen Tai. Aside from being Tutankhamun's grandmother, she was also Amenhotep's wife. They would later go on to find other statues of her hidden in similar ways elsewhere in the temple. Even with the later discoveries, this statue is unique. All the others are made of quartzite. This is the only one that was made of alabaster. And archaeologists aren't sure why. The face of the statue is quite badly damaged, but unfortunately that's not uncommon in ancient Egyptian sculptures. Most of us are familiar with the concept of accessorizing, by which we mean using a little jewelry to brighten up an outfit. If you've ever wondered how long ago human beings started accessorizing, we might have an answer for you. If these decorative beads are anything to go by, the answer to the question is 82,000 years. They were found in a cavern known as the Cave of Pigeons in Tafaralt, Morocco in June 2021. As the wearing of jewelry is associated with the development of symbolic thought among early humans, the find is considered to be significant. It was once thought that the first use of jewelry happened in Europe around 40,000 years ago, but these perforated seashell beads are twice as old as that. That strongly suggests the existence of a symbolic material culture in this part of the world all that time ago. Stone tools and animal remains have been found in the same cave, which might mean that it was once a hotbed of ritualistic activity. The beads were likely worn as necklaces or sewn into clothing. Even the idea that someone might have worn them because they thought they were pretty is fairly groundbreaking for the people of that era. We've already mentioned Tutankhamun in this video, so now let's talk about a burial site that's been hailed as the British equivalent to his tomb. Somewhat improbably, the so-called British Tutankhamun site was found in South End, Essex in 2003. It's thought to be a royal tomb and was found by accident during roadworks. The only thing left of its human occupant was a few tooth enamel fragments, but the rarity and quality of the grave goods the person was buried with 
are sufficient for archaeologists to declare that this was the final resting place of an Anglo-Saxon prince from the 6th century. That makes it the oldest known example of a Christian Anglo-Saxon royal burial. Among the goods in the grave were an ancient type of harp called a lyre, gold coins, glass beakers, and a painted wooden box which is the only surviving example of painted Anglo-Saxon woodwork in Britain. Most curious of all is a flagon from Syria, which presumably found its way to Britain during times of Roman occupation. It's thought that the occupant of the tomb was Siaxa, the brother of King Sabert of Essex, but there's not quite enough archaeological evidence to prove it. When you were a child at school, you probably hated being given homework by your teachers. If you have children of your own, you probably have a hard time persuading them to do theirs. That's nothing new. In fact, there were ancient Egyptian children being forced to do homework 1800 years ago, and they probably hated it just as much as the rest of us. We know about their homework because we found some of it preserved on a wax tablet which was acquired by the British Library in 1892. The slab, which is around the size of an iPad and contains text written in ancient Greek, contains two important life lessons. In neat handwriting, it reads, You should accept advice only from wise men, and you can't trust all of your friends. It sounds like these ancient Egyptian scholars were trying to teach their kids to have street smarts. In both cases, the sentences were written first by adults and then copied by the shakier hands of children. Right at the bottom is a multiplication table and then a few short reading exercises. In short, these children of the distant past went about learning in roughly the same way as children of today. Among the many problems faced by professional archaeologists is that priceless historical treasures are sometimes stolen and then sold on the black market by looters and treasure hunters. One such shipment of stolen goods was intercepted in the Bulgarian city of Schumann in 2015, and it's a good job the authorities got their hands on it. When professionals were called in to inspect the illicit shipment, they found that it contained a priceless 5,000-year-old stone relief from ancient summer in Mesopotamia. It's thought that it might once have been part of an altar or sarcophagus. While other slabs like this do exist, you'll only find them in prestigious museums like the Louvre in Paris. Having said that, even the one in Paris pales in comparison to this one, which is thought to be the best preserved item of its kind in the whole world. On its surface, there are scenes depicting people and animals feasting together, the significance of which is unknown. Nobody knows how the slab ended up in Bulgaria, but it was found in the hands of a Turkish black market dealer who was arrested for his part in the crime. Viking discoveries aren't exactly uncommon in Norway, but it's rare to find any surviving examples of Viking textiles. Usually they rot away long before archaeologists get their hands on them. That's what makes this next discovery so special. It's an embroidered wool Viking fabric, and it's over 1,000 years old. The valuable find was discovered inside the grave of a woman in Hestnes, Norway, during an archaeological excavation project in mid-2020. It's thought that she was laid to rest in the mid-9th century. The only other known surviving Viking textiles have come from the graves of wealthy individuals in Denmark, so this is a first in Norway. Whoever this woman was, she was also buried with a three-lobbed brooch resembling a turtle and several hundred pearls. She was clearly someone of great importance. Making clothing was a time-consuming and difficult process during the Viking Age, and so it was more common for clothing to be handed down from parents to children than buried like this. Burying this woman with her clothes was effectively saying that nobody else deserved to wear her clothing. Another mark of respect. Right at the start of this video, we discussed the possibility that humans arrived in South America much earlier than we once thought. Now, here's another discovery that suggests the same might be true of North America. It's a 24,000-year-old horse jawbone marked with the telltale signs of being worked with stone tools. 
and it's one of many such anomalous artifacts that have been recovered from the Bluefish Caves on the banks of the Bluefish River in Yukon, Canada. If we accept that humans lived in the caves and worked with stone tools 24,000 years ago, it pushes the date of human arrival on the continent back by 10,000 years. It also places the date of human arrival into the Ice Age, which might mean that the people who lived here were isolated from the rest of the world. That might explain why they didn't spread further across the continent. On the other hand, you might remember that the tool found in Brazil is also 24,000 years ago. Are we looking at two separate, unrelated human cultures? Or is it possible that both North and South America were populated by the same people at around the same time? It's well known that the ancient Mayans enjoyed playing ball games. We found plenty of ball courts in and around their ancient ruins. We also think that they took their sport even more seriously than we do today. In fact, some historians believe that the losing teams in these ball competitions were sacrificed. We don't know the rules of these ancient ball games because no written guides have been left behind, but this stone carving at least gives us an idea of what the game and its players might have looked like. It was found in the ruins of Tipan Chen Uitz in Belize in 2015. It's thought that the carving was once part of a facade marking the entrance to a palace complex and dates to somewhere between the 7th and 9th centuries. In it, we see a ball player wearing a decorative belt and holding an object that appears to have streamers. Whether the object is connected to the sport is unknown. Helpfully, there are also some hieroglyphs on the carving. They've been translated into English as Nine Handball Span, which could be the name of the sport or a confirmation about the type of ball that was used. This doesn't get us much closer to understanding the game, but it's a start. The type of shoe, often described as a winkle picker, has a bad reputation. They're often described as shoes that are unfit for almost any purpose, but during medieval times, they were even worse. According to a study that was published in June 2021, pointy shoes like the ones we see here were responsible for painful outbreaks of bunions in medieval Britain. That must have been an occupational hazard for court jesters. To reach their conclusion, academics studied the foot bones of more than 200 medieval skeletons buried in the cemeteries of Cambridge, England. They recorded a higher-than-expected number of foot deformities, and they think bad footwear was to blame. Winklepeckers were known as poulains during the 14th century and were very much the fashion of the time. As many as a quarter of the 14th and 15th century skeletons they studied had deformities compared to only 5% of those buried in the 12th and 13th centuries. Medieval winkle pickers were even longer and thinner than those of today, so it's no wonder they cause problems. It seems strange that people would put themselves through such discomfort for the sake of fashion. But then again, people still do it today. Death masks were once a common aspect of burial traditions all over the world. Nobody else made burial masks quite as unique as the people of the Philippines during the 13th and 14th centuries, though. Rather than creating full face masks, these ancient Filipinos created separate thin sheets of gold to cover the eyes, noses, and mouths of the deceased. The gold sheets would then be pressed into wax and then carefully attached to the corresponding facial features of the person being buried. It's thought that the ancient Filipinos picked this curious tradition up from cultures who lived in the south of China during the same period. Their usual design is likely to be connected to the idea that evil spirits can enter the bodies of the dead through the openings in the face unless they're covered after death. The most famous and best preserved mask was found in a grave in San Antonio Otone Iolio in the central Philippines and is currently on display in the National Museum of the Philippines in Manila. Strangely, the decoration on its left eye is different to the decoration on its right eye. What significance this has, if any at all, is unknown. We wouldn't know about the stunning Casco de Leiro at all had it not been accidentally discovered by a fisherman as he went about his daily work in Galicia, Spain during early 1976. 
It's most commonly interpreted as an incredible Bronze Age helmet, but not everyone agrees with that assessment. It's also been suggested that it's little more than a well-decorated bowl. Even if it is a bowl, it's still an amazing example of Bronze Age art. The fisherman found it on Leiro Beach while he was in the process of cleaning the land ahead of building a new shed for his fishing boats. The helmet, or bowl, was deeply embedded in the debris. For all anybody knows, it might have been there for thousands of years. Based on a scientific analysis of the object, it seems it was created by hammering out a single sheet of gold and then adding six bands of tiny concentric circles as further decorations. That seems like too much trouble to go through for it to be a bowl, but we've never seen another crown or helmet that looks anything like this. That's part of what makes it so special. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.